If you're a drone pilot, you either already know the feeling of crashing your drone, or you're about to. If you're one of the smart ones, you're watching this video before it happens to you. I recently crashed my drone in the jungles of Ecuador. And I don't mean like a kiddie pool jungle like the one you see behind me. I mean like a real, remote, Rambo jungle. Right, Sacha? Yeah? Yeah? When it first happened, I thought I was unlucky, but now that I've had a chance to review the events, I've come to the conclusion that it was pretty well 100% my fault. I'm going to share with you some of the reasons that led to the crash, in hopes that it can help you fly successfully more often and crash less often. Sound good? At the end of the video, I'm going to share a special bonus section on how you and I can reduce the chances of crashing again in similar situations through the lessons I've learned. Buckle up, let's jump right in. When you crash your drone in the middle of nowhere jungles of Ecuador, 25 meters high in the top of a tree, it's gone forever every single time, right? Find out the answer to that question in this video here. Let's get into the four reasons why we crashed the drone that day. Reason number one, mental fatigue. On the day of the crash, it was near the end of our day and I was already mentally tired before I even put the drone in the air. The day started when my alarm went off in complete darkness at 4 a.m. By 6 a.m. we were catching the first of two buses taking us on a three hour journey to a place we'd never been before. We were going to a remote reserve that was the home of many different exotic hummingbirds. After a long and tiring bus ride, we finally arrived at our destination and immediately I began filming the hummingbirds and continued to do so for five hours straight. If you also love hummingbirds, you can see many more videos of them on my personal channel here. The weather had been variable that day with rain on and off and consistent wind all day. Because of this, I thought it was likely that I wouldn't get a chance to fly the drone at all. Sitting there after filming the birds all day, I decided I would relax for 20-30 minutes before setting off on the return journey back to the place we were staying in. As I sat there relaxing, I began to think, you know, it's not raining right now and it's not super windy. Maybe I should put the drone in the air. I usually find reasons to talk myself out of it. Yeah, I could fly it for just one battery. Keeping it low altitude to minimize the effects of the wind and keep it close to my location. You know, for simplicity, right? I underestimated how tired I was. Reason number two for the crash, lack of planning the shots and getting familiar with the terrain around me. Most people, including me, put up the drone first and then have a look around with it. When trying to reduce your chances of an accident, you should consider having a look around with your eyes first for 10 or 15 minutes before you even unpack your drone and then plan your shots with what you have learned from observing your surroundings. Reason number three for the crash, failing to keep line of sight of my drone. When you lack obstacle avoidance like I do with the DJI Mini 2, it becomes even more important to keep line of sight at all times while you're filming in tricky terrain. The drone can be flying at a rapid pace and so in mountainous or hilly terrain, that 30 meters of clearance you think you have can evaporate to zero in a blink of an eye. Reason number four, changing the flight path before flying out in reverse. You can see from the footage that I flew forward. Then before flying backwards, I changed the flight path, creating a trifecta of dumb ideas because now I'm flying backwards blindly while not maintaining line of sight, all the while having no obstacle avoidance feature on my drone. How unlucky was I to crash the drone, right? <sighs> yeah, basically guaranteed it. What can we learn from these four reasons described above to reduce our chances of crashing in the future? Lesson number one, always check with yourself and evaluate where you're at with your mental state, energy levels, and even your attitude. If any of these assessments come back in a negative state, consider delaying or skipping flying your drone altogether. Lesson number two, in challenging or tricky landscapes, always provide enough time to familiarize yourself with the landscapes before launching the drone. Lesson number three, always keep line of sight with your drone. 
Before the crash, I wouldn't pay much attention to this recommendation. Now after crashing, I can say that I will be giving this tip a whole lot more priority going forward, especially high priority in tricky or mountainous terrains. Lesson number four, always come out the same way you went in. If you like reverse flyaway reveal shots like I do, you will continuously be putting your drone in situations like this, where you are flying backwards blindly. One way to drastically reduce your chances of crashing is to when flying in reverse, come out the exact same way you came in like you see me not do in the footage. Simply reverse the exact same flight path that you came in with. The question I'm sure you're all asking right now is, did Dum Dum get his drone back? You can find out the answer to that question here.